So in our previous video, we talked about what is mitochondrial dysfunction and why you should care about it and how it can affect your body and chronic disease. In this video, let's talk about what to do about it. Let's dive in. So either you've done your conventional testing with looking at your HDL cholesterol, looking at your triglycerides, waist circumference, blood pressure, et cetera, or maybe you've done a, a little bit more digging with a functional medicine test that digs deeper into those metabolic pathways. Well, now with that, we've identified, you know, where we're going wrong and what we need to address. How do we actually do that? How can we boost our mitochondria production? How can we make them more efficient? That is our goal. And the answer to that is going back to basics with diet, with lifestyle and with mindset, surprisingly enough. Number one, looking at our nutrition. We want to do everything we can to really get enough vitamins, minerals, and nutrients to actually power our mitochondria, to actually feed them. And a lot of us, if we are eating the standard American diet, then we are just not getting it. Those processed foods are getting in the way and we're not fueling, literally fueling those cells that then go on to make energy. So mitochondria take in either carbohydrates or fatty acids through beta oxidation. So we need to be feeding them enough of these fatty acids or enough glucose so that they can do their job. What they also need are different vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that act as cofactors in these reactions. And that's where it comes back to making sure you're eating enough vegetables, a variety of vegetables, different colored vegetables, um, getting enough protein, as well as enough healthy fat. Just as important, we need to be avoiding a lot of the processed foods because those gum up the system, they get in the way. Also avoiding excess alcohol because again, those can create more oxidative damage, um, make it harder and for the mitochondria to work and it really just gum up the system and you also need to be making sure you're getting enough fiber and again that usually is going to come if you're eating enough vegetables so eating whole foods things that you cook at home things that are easy to make and process i usually when i'm working with my clients i take it back to simply looking at your balance of your fats your carbs and your protein you're getting whole foods you're getting real food you're getting nutrition and within that you're gonna get your macro breakdown and you're gonna get those vitamins minerals and nutrients that your mitochondria need and when we're getting those foods we're also getting more antioxidants and remember from the previous video antioxidants are kind of the counterbalance to some of the negative effects of metabolic processes that happen in our body or the even just the mitochondrial doing what they do can create um, free radicals and we need antioxidants to balance that. Best way to get that is through our nutrition. Of course, there are supplements, um, supplements, especially when we're thinking about antioxidants. So things like vitamin C, vitamin E, glutathione, NAD, urolithin A is another popular one that has been cropping up more and more in the research, which is actually a byproduct of what bacteria in your gut produce. There's NAC, coenzyme Q10, alpha lipoic acid, D3, K2. So so there's a lot of options out there as far as supplements for antioxidants. Now, my approach is generally to actually use one of the functional tests to determine which one do you need? Which one are you lacking? Because everybody's a little bit different. So for me, it's not a one size fits all. It's using these, uh, for me, it's using these tests to say, okay, specifically your body needs this for this pathway. And, you know, being able to look at a nutrient panel and say, okay, you're, well, you're deficient in this and this to me makes it a little bit more customized, makes it personalized and makes it easier so that you're not just guessing which supplements to take or guessing of how to tweak your nutrition. The next thing is exercise. And this is interesting because it can be in a variety of ways. Simple things like walking are going to get more glucose up, taken up into your muscle cells. It's gonna uh, then get into your mitochondria. It's going to allow your mitochondria to be more efficient. Things like resistance training and endurance training can can also give you more mitochondria. So building more of those powerhouses for the cell to fuel them. Basically, the more you move, the more often, the more mitochondria you're gonna have and the more efficient they're gonna be. So exercise or movement is a critical component. And I tend to use the word movement a little bit more because I want you moving throughout the day. It's not just going to the gym, you know, for 30 minutes or an hour if you sit all day. It's finding ways to incorporate like with the walking, you know, whether you have a walking pad at home or whether you get up and take breaks, it's just more movement. So we talked about nutrition, we talked about exercise, we talked about supplements, sleep. Sleep is another crucial key factor. If you're not sleeping, you can't recover. 
If you're not recovering, your mitochondria are never going to be able to be as efficient as they can be. So doing everything you can to troubleshoot your sleep, you know, making sure you're sleeping through the night, making sure that, you know, you have a sleep routine. Everybody is at different points in their life. You know, if you're a woman who's going through menopause or perimenopause, we know that sleep can get disrupted for various reasons. So if you need to work on your hormones in some sort of way in order to get your sleep on track, that is definitely something I recommend. So knowing where to intervene for your particular issue with sleep is crucial. And then the other surprising factor that a lot of people don't think about is mindset and how that can actually affect your mitochondrial function. Now, this is kind of crazy. Now, we definitely need more studies on this, but I think especially as a naturopathic doctor and believing in whole mind-body medicine, of course, the way you think and feel is going to affect your physiology. That's just my belief. Now, there's this study here that was the first I've really seen about how mood and how your feelings and what you're thinking really does start to affect um, your mitochondrial function. In this study, they basically found that those who had a more positive mindset or like had fewer negative or more positive thoughts had better mitochondrial function period. So I found that very interesting because one of the things I also do is really work on mindset because you know, we talk a lot about our physical health and what's going on inside our body, but we never really take the time to connect, you know, how we think and how we feel and how we act. And, you know, our spiritual connection can also really affect that. Because if you are caught in that loop of thinking about being exhausted and thinking about being sick all the time and having a lot of negative thoughts, often what happens is that you feel crappier and crappier and crappier. So one of the things that I recommend in working with your mindset is Meditation, journaling, gratitude practice, finding something that helps you deal more with stress because we know that when we're stressed out, that can affect our emotions. And when we're stressed, that affects our hormones. And it turns on this entire cascade physiologically that then goes on to affect our health. So making sure that you have some sort of mindset type practice is going to be, in my opinion, a crucial key and really making your mitochondria a little bit happier and more productive. My message here again is to empower you to take control of your health. Um, look, mitochondrial dysfunction is something we're talking about more and it's something that really does affect our health long term. And we're really learning about how it really starts before a lot of these chronic diseases show up. So what I love a bit about this as a naturopathic doctor and being able to drill down into this is that it really does get to the root cause, right? Like on a cellular level, but also on a mindset level. So I hope that you are able to take this information. I hope it empowers you, whether you can do this on your own or whether or not you need to seek out some help. My message is to empower you to really know what's going on with your body and have some positive, concrete steps that you can take to move forward. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you want to learn how to work with me, you can click on the link in the description box. All right. I hope that this video was helpful and that you learned something and I will see you in the next one. Bye.